So we are solving problem 5.13 and in equilibrium of rigid bodies in 3D. So what we want to find is in this problem, this is our axis x, y, and z, and we have here a beam that is bent, right, right here at this corner, and it's supported to the ground with a long bearing. What does a long bearing, bearing means? It means that it doesn't allow to move in perpendicular to the bearing, it means doesn't allow to move in X or C, but it doesn't allow to rotate in those directions either because it's a long bearing. It means that it doesn't allow the rotation respect to axis X and it doesn't allow the rotation respect to axis C. So it doesn't allow this rotation as well. It does allow the rotation along its axis. So having clear what motions are restricted is very important because that will tell us how many reactions does that support produces. So remember that something that is restricted, it becomes a reaction. So if the displacement is restricted, that becomes a force in my free body diagram. If the rotation is restricted, that becomes a moment in my free body diagram. So now that I understood clearly what motion does this bearing restrict, and here I have a cord that only restricts one motion along the uh, C-axis, then I can draw my free body diagram. So the free body diagram, I reproduce my beam, right? And I put the active forces, I only have one, which is 80 pounds. This is active force, right? Active force. And then I put the reactive forces. I have a tension right here, do by this cord. And I have how many reactions? We said that this long bearing restricts the displacement in X and C. Therefore, I have a force in AX. This is point A. Let me just check. Yes, this is point A. And AC. So this is point A. And this is tension. We can call it tension B if we like, right? And then it also restricts the rotation at A. So I have a moment at A in AX. And it restricts the rotation at C. So that bearing only allows the rotation along the axis of that beam, and it does not prevent either the displacement along the beam. So I have only four reactions. As you see, here we have rigid body in 3D, and this free body diagram shows only five reactions. So this system is not in equilibrium for all the forces that you can apply. It's in equilibrium only for that force that we are applying. But if we apply one force, for example, in y direction, this will be able to move in the y direction because it's not restricted in y. OK, so this is our free body diagram. This is always the first step in solving a problem of equilibrium. And the second step is applying the equations of equilibrium. So let me apply the equations of equilibrium. As you know, in 3D problems, we have six equations, right? Because in 3D, that means that we have six equations of equilibrium, right? So we have the three forces, force in x, and equals to zero. That will be my first equation. So as, as, as you see, I have in AX equals 2. And as you see, I don't have any other force applied in X direction. Therefore, AX is equals to C. I already have my first result. My second equation will be forces in Y. And in Y, I see I don't have any 
equation, so I don't have any forces. So that equation doesn't bring anything to the problem. As I say, if we have a force in Y and we don't have any restrictions in that direction, that will create motion. And that will be studied in dynamics. At this point, we all our motion are restricted. So for C, we have AC, we have negative 80, and we have positive detention. So in this equation, we have two unknowns. So what I'm going to do to get another equation, so we have one, two, three. I will take moment respect to one point. For example, moment respect to point A. So if I take moment respect to point A, I add all the moments and that will be equals to zero. This is a vector. This e equation right here will lead to three scalar equations. So this is a vector equation that will have three components and the components will be in X, in Y, and C and will give me the other three equations of equilibrium that I need to solve the problem. So what do I have? I have MA X in I plus MA C in K. And then I have to take moment respect to this point of these two other forces that I have. I have the distance, right? And this one is 1.5. And this is 1.5. So what I'm going to write right here is that I will write this is R1 cross F1 and F1 being this force over here, right? Plus R2 cross F2, which is my tension. So let me solve for these two right here. And this, all of that will be equals to C. So let me do it over here. So I will do R1 cross F1. So what is the position vector from point A to where the force is located? The force is located at point D. So this R1 will be the vector AD cross F1. The vector AD is six feet, six in J and 1.5 in negative i cross my vector, which is negative 80 in k. I can write this as a matrix, or as you recall, use our multiplication properties, right, for cross product. And I know I cross J is K, and this is positive. And in this case, I'm multiplying J cross K. J cross K gives me I positive. So this will be equals to 6 times 80. J cross K, we say that is I. And I cross K, I'm multiplying this direction, is negative J. Negatives and negatives positive with a negative will give me negative 1.580 in J. Okay, so an R2 times the tension will be, R2 will be the position vector from A to B cross the tension. That will be equals to 6 in J minus 3 in I cross that tension that is which magnitude is unknown but I know that direction is in K. So I do something similar J cross K is I positive I cross K is negative J so I get negative 3 this is in I, J cross K, and I cross K, we say that is neg negative J. So with that, we can write 
our equations from here. So from here, my three equations will become in I, I have M A X, and from these two, which components do I have in A? I have this one right here. This will be 48 in I, and this one will be plus 6T. This is equals to zero. And in J, I have no moment, and here I have 1.5 times 80, negative, negative 3t equals to 0. So actually this one here is positive. Otherwise we did not make sense because we can find here that the tension has to be positive. is equals to, if I divide by 3, that will become 80 divided by 2, this becomes 40 and my units are pounds. So we were already able to find the value of the tension. And finally, K, which we have M, A, C, and which components do we have in K? As you see here, we don't have any components, and here we don't have any components either. Therefore, it's equals to zero. The only one that we are missing to calculate is this one right here. We plug in our value for T and find that the moment as X is equals to 240 pounds feet. So we were able to, with six equations, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then with these six equations, we were able to find the reactions at support A. And this is the solution of this problem.